Since mid-April, customers' deposits in several village banks in Henan, China, have vanished. More than 400,000 depositors were unable to withdraw their deposits of nearly 40 billion RMB. The incident caused depositors to take action to defend their rights and also sparked public concerns. So where did the 40 billion RMB go? Can these 400,000 people still get their money back? We will talk about this topic today. Let's first briefly review what has happened. The case started on April 18th, when four village banks in Henan and two in Anhui suspended their online banking and mobile banking services, using system maintenance as an excuse. Some depositors from outside the town found that they could not withdraw their money electronically through their online bank accounts, mobile applications, or third-party platforms at these banks. When the depositors rushed to the local bank in Henan, they were told that they were unable to withdraw cash at the counter either. The depositors then reported to the police, who claimed to have opened a case for investigation. In late May, after waiting for more than a month without any results, the depositors gathered at the Henan provincial government to defend their rights, only to be beaten by a plainclothes police, and out-of-town depositors were forcibly repatriated. On June 10th, there was an incident that the health codes of the victimized depositors from all over the country were suddenly turned into red codes by Henan provincial government. Under China's epidemic prevention policy, a red health code means that one cannot travel on public transportation, cannot enter or leave public places, and cannot go to Henan to defend one's rights either. Some depositors' health codes suddenly became red when they were on their way to Henan to defend their rights, or were in Henan. They were immediately pulled away and isolated by epidemic prevention personnel. The red code incident sparked a great deal of outrage. One netizen said, this might be the most terrifying use of the health code since its inception. People are worried that the Chinese government is starting to use digital totalitarian tools to maintain their power. On June 18th, police in Xuchang, Henan province, finally released a police report on the village banks incident in Henan, saying that the major shareholder of these village banks, the Henan New Fortune Group, is suspected of major crimes and is being investigated. It has been identified that a criminal gang led by Liu Yi, the company's de facto controller, has been suspected of using the village banks to commit a series of serious crimes since 2011. At present, the police have arrested a number of suspects and seized a number of funds and assets involved in the case according to the law. However, the main suspect, Liu Yi, had fled to the U.S. It is bizarre that at noon of June 26, one of the banks in question, the Henan Kaifeng New Oriental Village Bank, suddenly opened online transactions for about 15 minutes, and some depositors successfully withdrew their money during this period. Some people disclosed that relatives of the bank's executives successfully withdrew more than 1 million in cash during this short period. The depositors who got the news rushed to the scene and demanded an explanation from the Kaifeng New Oriental Bank. The bank's person in charge said that the account with abnormalities would be examined, and the depositors who had withdrawn the money would also cooperate with the investigation. According to the Chinese media, Henan New Fortune Group was established on July 19, 2011, and was dissolved on February 10, 2022. The company has a series of complicated shareholding infiltrations through more than 100 registered shadow companies, manipulating at least 13 city commercial banks and village banks. The company took away huge sums of money by means of trust loans from affiliated companies, guarantees provided by banks, internal and external collusion, and use of third-party platforms and money brokers. They allegedly transferred funds amounting to 39.7 billion RMB, 
and transferred some of the funds to offshore accounts. This finally led to the big incident of the village banks of Henan. So who is this Liu Yi? According to mainland media investigation, Liu Yi was born in 1974, Zhenping County, Nanyang City, Henan Province. Although he is the actual controller of Henan New Fortune Group, his name is not in the information registered in the business sector. According to a confidant, Liu Yi has moved his nationality to Cyprus, claiming to be the commercial investment representative of Liberia in China, and the chairman of the Cyprus Aphrodite Investment Group. Liu Yi first struck gold from the highway business when he used his network to obtain a 30-year concession for Lanwei Expressway in Henan Province in 2003. The total investment for this 61-kilometer expressway was 2.4 billion RMB. Then, Liu Yi used the expressway toll rights as collateral to take out more than 2 billion RMB from several large state-owned banks. After that, Liu Yi began to use various other means to obtain loans from large state-owned banks, and then lend through the enterprises under his control to make a profit from the interest rate differential. In August 2017, Liu Yi applied for a $3.5 billion loan from Hengfeng Bank in the name of Lanwei Expressway Company, which has only repaid $300 million and still owes $3.2 billion in principal and $100 million in interest. The case led to the investigation of Cai Guohua, the former chairman of Hengfeng Bank, who was sentenced to death in 2020, with his execution suspended for two years for five convictions of criminal offenses including abuse of power, corruption, and illegal loan issuance. The first financial newspaper reported that in a 2018 verdict of the Zhengzhou Intermediate Court against Qiao Junan, vice president of the Bank of Zhengzhou, it was disclosed that Liu Yi had lent Qiao Junan more than 9 million yuan to seek loans, and later bribed him with more than 23 million yuan. Moreover, the two also worked together to make a profit from the interest rate differential. Chiao Junan helped to obtain the bank's approval, and Liu Yi borrowed money, and then lent it to some affiliated companies. Chiao Junan was sentenced to 14 years in prison. In addition, executives of Pingding Shan Bank and Zhongyuan Bank in Henan province were investigated, and they all have close ties to Liu Yi. In February 2022, when Cai Yisheng, vice president of the China Banking Regulatory Commission, was arrested for accepting bribes, Liu Yi assisted in the investigation and then fled to the United States. Henan New Fortune Group was dissolved right after, in February of the same year. Liu Yi has been involved in a number of financial cases over the years, but was able to escape and eventually fled to the U.S. We have no way of knowing what kind of collusion and insider trading was involved. Let's take a look at Liu Yi's other titles. In 2018, Liu Yi donated to the Liberia Children's Foundation as a charity ambassador, and in 2019, the president of Liberia, George Weah, appointed Liu Yi as Liberia's commercial and investment representative in China. In 2020, Liu Yi was the president of the European China Investment Federation and introduced the World Health Organization and APHP, a public hospital group in Paris, to sign an industrial cooperation agreement with Chinese companies to build a Sino-European international hospital project. In 2021, Liu Yi became the chairman of the board of directors of Peace Ever TV International Media Group. The group describes itself as a non-profit new media organization based in New York and managed by a board of directors that has had a partnership with the United Nations for many years. On January 31, 2022, Peace Ever TV International Media Group and the World Harmony Foundation hosted a countdown event to welcome the new year and celebrate the Winter Olympics. The celebration of Chinese New Year and the upcoming 24th Winter Olympic Games in Beijing was broadcasted on the Disney screen in Times Square. United Nations officials, U.S. politicians, and cultural figures were invited to participate. Liu Yi also participated in the event via video and gave a speech. From the above social and business activities that Liu Yi participated in, it seems that his role overseas is more like an agent for the Chinese Communist Party, which may be one of the reasons why he has been able to get away with punishment from various financial crimes. 
As to whether the depositors can get their money back, the lawyer gave three possibilities. If the depositors' monies got into the bank, the money is deposit and thus can be withdrawn as long as the bank does not go bankrupt. If the bank does not have the money to pay and goes bankrupt, the insurance company will compensate each depositor the principal and interest up to 500,000 yuan. And if the money did not go into the bank, the depositors become participants or victims of crowdfunding fraud. And whether they can get their money back depends on how the court dispose of the assets of the new fortune group. From the current public opinion of the CCP and the official notification, it seems to be leading to the third possibility. For example, the notification says customer instead of depositors, funds instead of deposits, and earnings instead of interest. In other words, they are turning hundreds of thousands of depositors into participants in financial fraud and illegal fundraising. Then the case will be handled by the police, and the mastermind of the case will be the Henan New Fortune Group. The supervisory department can then ignore the matter, and the village bank is out of the picture. So many professionals analyzed that, according to the past cases of P2P illegal fundraising by the Chinese Communist Party, there is a high probability that the depositors will not get their money back. Therefore, the depositors are still fighting for their rights in front of the Zhengzhou Banking Regulatory Commission. So is the official notice a way of shirking responsibility? The first thing you need to do is to take a look at the official report and see whether the depositors have the right to get their deposits back. Let's take a look at the nature and mode of operation of the village banks. In 2006, the China Banking Regulatory Commission, or CBRC, relaxed its policies on access to financial institutions in the rural banking sector, and a large number of village banks emerged all over the country. According to the CBRC, by the end of 2021, there were 1,651 village banks in China, accounting for 36% of the total number of banking institutions in China. This also shows that village banks are also formal banks that conduct public deposits under official supervision. Originally, due to geographical and scale constraints, the deposit-taking capacity of village banks is significantly disadvantaged compared to that of large banks. However, since March of 2016, the central bank issued the notice on improving personal bank account services and enhancing account management, which clarifies that banks can open Type 2 bank accounts for users remotely through channels such as online banking and mobile banking. This gave the green light for banks especially small and medium-sized banks, to participate in internet finance. These small and medium-sized banks have been able to attract many out-of-town depositors by partnering with online financial platforms such as Baidu's Du Xiaoman and Jingdong Finance, which offer interest rates about 1% higher than those of large banks. In January 2021, the CBRC and the Central Bank of China issued a notice requiring commercial banks to refrain from conducting fixed deposits and demand deposit business through third-party online platforms. And the relevant online platforms took down these products. However, most of these online depositors followed the tips from the village banks and continued their online deposit and withdrawal operations through the bank's WeChat or apps using online banking and mobile banking channels. According to the Communist Party's official investigation into the Henan Village Bank case, the deposits made through third-party financial platforms and online banking systems did not go to the bank's account, but were transferred to an account controlled by the bank's shareholder, the Henan New Fortune Group, and vanished. This means that the banks did not receive the money, so they should not be held responsible not to mention any deposit insurance. But third-party financial platforms have a different story. According to the Economic Observer, the customer service of several third-party financial platforms said that the platform signed a cooperation agreement directly with the bank, duly followed legal procedures, and the responsibilities of all parties are clearly delineated. The platforms also exercised due diligence before cooperating with the village banks. Therefore, some third-party platform sources speculate that the money that users deposited to the bank is real, and using the real systems, 
Otherwise, users will not be able to open a Type 2 account. However, after money entered the bank, someone else may have made some kind of fake system and transferred the money away. Since 2021, these banks no longer cooperate with third-party financial platforms, instead using the bank's WeChat app, online banking, and mobile banking to access money. This part of the money is no longer related to third-party financial platforms. But now, the official report is confusing the terms, obviously shirking responsibility for the banks and the regulatory authorities. Therefore, the depositors believe that we depositors are putting money into the bank, and we do not know the so-called new fortune group, so don't shift the blame to them. We depositors made deposits legally. Now we want to withdraw them. Freedom to deposits and withdrawals. People also suspect that nearly 40 billion of deposits may not all have been transferred by the new fortune group, and some money may be misappropriated by the local government. These village banks have close ties with the local government, the COVID prevention policies has made the government pay for a lot of nucleic acid testing, build trailer hospitals, and many local governments cannot make ends meet anymore. There is speculation that the vanishing of bank deposits may have been misappropriated by some local officials for epidemic prevention. This speculation has not yet been supported by sufficient evidence. However, after the village bank incident in Henan, the local government used the health code to control the victimized depositors. This requires collaboration between multiple government departments, so it must be coordinated by an important person in charge of the local government. There must be collusion and insider trading among officials at all levels behind this. The official of Henan province is now putting all the blame on Liu Yi, the real controller of Henan New Fortune Group, who has fled the country. Compared to your typical unscrupulous businessmen, the Chinese Communist government has now refreshed people's perception of the word evil. In addition, the latest investigation results show that about 28 banks have complex shareholding relationships with Henan New Fortune Group, so it is also worth paying attention to whether these banks are at risk as well. Moreover, the financial risks of some village banks in China are rapidly rising due to various factors such as inadequate supervision and economic downturn. According to the Central Bank of China, as of the second quarter of 2021, there were 122 village banks that were classified as high-risk institutions. And there are about 86 other banks with the same business model as the village banks that are now having trouble many of which are now suffering from online and offline runs. So, the village banks in Henan have only exposed the tip of the iceberg, and the larger part still hidden underwater is the real problem.